I am really interested in the horse's welfare. And I think you can read a history of the horse through the representation of the horse. In many ways, I could call that a sort of history of violence, because I think art has actually documented quite a lot of violence against the horse. But we just don't interpret it like that, because we're interpreting it into a different narrative, one that is preoccupied with status, money, power. Horses have always been accessories in this kind of human history. But there is a sort of unsaid secret going on. There's a lot of unsaid things here. And this is where I wanted to go, where a, a Swedish journalist in um, what is the, the biggest uh, equestrian publication in Sweden, she calls it the hangover after the party. She's talking about Falstable Horse Show, how they're all enjoying it. It's great. She even mentions that they've got a great DJ. And then you wake up and find that someone, which she later on calls the mob, has spread images on social media. Um, and then she comes with a very curious interpretation. We all have the same, I'm translating as I go along here, we all have the same ideals in dressage, but our way there isn't linear. The road to light riding and wordless communication with a horse isn't created through one, on one day. Occasionally, one's horse needs more motivation than that which is beautiful. So in other words, occasionally one needs to motivate the horse more than that which is beautiful. I find that sentence really fascinating. Because basically she's kind of acknowledging that to perform at high level, and here I think she's most talking about dressage, uh, you need to motivate your horse very highly. Why shouldn't motivating your horse be beautiful? And it's also not true that we all have the same ideals, because no. not everyone thinks that what you see in the, in the dressage ring is ideal. And certainly not, I don't think, motivating yours with a carrot is ugly. And I don't think motivating it with a pat is ugly. So I'd really like to know what motivation is ugly. But this is where I think the crux of the matter is, is that really... A lot of this is about that riding is uh, based on motivation that is ugly. And we know it's ugly, and we agree it's ugly, but we also agree not to talk about it. Yeah. And that, in a way, has been the sort of secret, I think, of uh, probably for several hundred years. It's, we're going back to Moybridge, where he was being criticised because he revealed that the horse and rider, or the horse on its own, was not always beautiful. But it was only fractions of the moments that actually we thought were really beautiful. When Mybridge took all the still images, so basically broke down movement, which was what he wanted to do, he needed to break down movement to show that all four legs were off the ground, it, people weren't that interested in seeing all of them. Quote, the problem was that on their own, some of the individual photographs showed quite grotesque attitudes. And these were often challenged verbally and in caricature because they ran counter to the pet prejudices that had been established for centuries in the history of art. The conversion from still to moving images would plainly demonstrate their authenticity. There is slightly more about this, but um, what I think it, it was actually being said was that he had managed to capture the horse like we had not seen it before because it had been painted, which was, of course, very selective. So suddenly we were seeing these images of horses, and also horses with riders, which were in positions we really didn't want to see them in. And they weren't what we thought or imagined it looked like. And of course, when you see a horse moving with your eyes, you cannot catch these sort of 
what they call hair grotesque attitudes. It's one of these things that fascinates me with why photography, why still images are so important, because you can never see something like this. Either that I, I, I cannot pick up this if it was moving, either in real life or in video. So you can see the tongue is being held down in the middle here by the bit. You would never see that moving. Speaking of blue tongues, if you're interested in blue tongues, for me that's quite blue. And here you can also see that his tongue is actually sort of lying wedged. And as technology has developed, the images have probably become uglier and more and more detailed and more and more invasive. And we agree not to show them. What happens then with social media is this totally explodes and it's a total sort of power shake-up of who shows the horse. Now anyone can more or less put out a photograph of the horse. If you just think there are unfortunate moments, you're kind of missing the point. And this is what the sort of equestrian federations and a lot of the sort of horse sports world, I don't know if they really connect to that they're being accused of violence or if they just think it's a bunch of loony people who are taking unfortunate moments to try to somehow deface them. I think both the moving image and the single image carry information. Both of them carry very valid information both of them carry information that one could be critical of. They can, they, they both can be very manipulative. They can be partially untruthful. They can be partially truthful. But th there is a difference in that the single image sh can show us what's going on that our eye cannot catch. And this, I think, is really the crux of the matter today. The problem is that we don't like to see what's actually going on. We just really don't, and people don't. I also, when I'm photographed, you know, I do get riding. You know, I do get a bit like, oh my God, that doesn't quite look like what I imagined it looking like. And you get really upset. It's like the big fantasy just shatters. And there are so many people holding this fantasy of what other riders and horses look like and what oneself looks like as a rider. I often stand with a huge amount of people around me in the public looking at the warm-ups and stuff and people are just so in awe of the riders. But saying that, I have noticed lately that there are more critical voices in the public. And uh, certainly people are more, much more aware of what I'm photographing.